Hello everybody and welcome back once again to Let's Play Mass Effect 3. Last time we left off we uh, found a whole host of our missing models aboard our ship. We even found our space hamster Koku who is now safely back in his cage in my cabin quarters. And we headed to the Cerberus facility where we picked up some artifacts which will uh, probably come in, uh, in, into use at some point, if not already. So where do we go this time? Well, this time we have our main objective. Palavan. Pravak Fedorian needs finding. Needs rescuing. And Shepard is doing it only because the Tyrian council member promised to help us if we help him. An eye for an eye. Whilst looking at the mission summary, I do notice that we have a, a, a Citadel mission, Alien Medigel Formula. We did pick up some Medigel Formula from Sanctum, and apparently someone on the Citadel may be able to use it. If I was to hazard a guess, probably somebody in the medical facility. But we're not too fussed about rushing off there to do that. As I say, our priority right now is indeed Palavan. So without further ado, Let's get over there and see what the hell's going on. Sigurd's Cradle, 100%. Now that 100% means I've found 100% of the uh, thingamabobsies. <laughs> I forgot the name already. Assets, war assets. I found 100% of the war assets. Whereas in Exodus, I've only found 28%. But as I say, unless I have a mission, that specifically directs me to certain systems, I'm not going to just scan them because I know where the locations are. So uh, that's how we're doing it, that's how we're playing it. And uh, here we go, the Apian Crest. Here we are in the uh, Trebia system. Is this the only one system of this cluster or is there more? No, there is another one. There is one more. Okay, oh, no, there's two more. Right, well, we are here. So let us take a look. Datriux. Scans indicate the Reapers did not destroy the surface facilities. It is possible they either did not see them as a threat or plan on using them for their own purposes. A few Reaper destroyers serve as a skeleton crew here, backed by a capital ship in case the Turians attempt to retake the planet. Apparently, full of iridium. We have Palavan itself, which we have read about. The only thing on this planet that isn't silver are the Turians. It's also clear they're made of steel. These were Alliance hero John Grissom's impressions of the Turian homeworld Palavan, seen by humans for the first time following the First Contact War. The Turians' martial attitude permeates every aspect of Palavan society, from architecture to art and politics. It's no surprise that their homeworld was never occupied by an invading force until now. The Reapers, aware of their enemy's reputation, brought overwhelming force to Palavan and did not hesitate to bombard cities that resisted. And all of them resisted. The dust and smoke from pulverized cities is now a, breath a breathing hazard across much of the planet. Water and power supplies have all but vanished. Still, the fight here has cost the Reapers dearly. Turians are a force to be reckoned with when it comes to military might. Aventon. Named for a tactician philosopher whose treatise on light and leadership is known by every Turian youth who pays attention in class. It is a small hot rock planet surrounded by a haze of methane and helium. It was thoroughly mined for valuable minerals in the early days of the Turian space age and since then had little to offer. Venton's token spy satellites and defence drones prove no match for even a small Reaper presence, and best reports suggest they have been eliminated. Kalax. 
Like nearby Eventon, Kalax was named for an ancient philosopher and author. But where Eventon wrote for the military leaders of tomorrow, Kalax focused on those who feed, clothe, heal and arm the soldier. Her enormous tome, Service, features a lengthy chapter on laws that form the basis for the Turian concept of citizenship tiers. Kalax is lower in temperature than Eventon, and its minerals were thus exploited first. The Turian defences on Kalax are not completely destroyed, which is unusual. It may be that remnants of the scattered Turian fleet regrouped using the planet for cover, and eliminated the satellite hunting Reaper destroyers before their mission was complete. More likely, the destroyers found a way to compromise the defences through wireless hacking, and the unmanned drones present now obey them. Essenus. Home to a substantial Turian garrison defending the planet's fuel infrastructure. It once held a distribution centre for anti proton based fuel as well as the more common helium 3 collectors. <clears throat> the garrison is now gone. The Reapers drove the Turians off and destroyed all available machinery. A few Vola ships are now present likely on a scavenger hunt. Impera <coughs> The small planet Impera is a hothouse of helium and argon, the latter a product of decaying radioactive materials. Robo mining was once lucrative here, but like the rest of the solar system, the only remaining veins are inaccessible by cost-effective means. The planet is named for Atrian Impera, the Turian Machiavelli, whose ambitious political philosophies led to her reign as regent in the continent spanning Nihilin Empire for more than a decade. She famously combined citizenship tiers with a uh, meritocracy rather than a caste system, which served to strengthen her empire. This practice fell in and out of favour for centuries before its revival early in the Turian's age of nation states. The Reaper invasion largely ignored Impera, sending only a token force to destroy the scientific equipment around the planet. Fuel depot if we need to top up. And here is why we're here. Manai, Palavan's largest moon, has been shrouded in secrecy since the dawn of the Turian Space Age. During the Krogan Rebellions, the hierarchy classified nearly all data on Menai and its sister moon, Nanus, because they feared the Krogan could use the moon's weapons by smashing them into Palavan's surface. However, some information has leaked out. Images of Turian bases where personnel walk without enviro suits indicate advanced infrastructure, likely a network of subterranean tunnels with powerful mass effect field generators that retain heat and atmosphere over swaths of the surface. The Reaper's plans for bombarding the bases were met with fierce resistance by the Turian fleet and the Moon's anti-aerospace defences. With their easy victory stalled, the Reapers deployed a variety of ground units to take the bases one at a time. The Turians have the advantage on the moon, but the Reapers have the patience to slowly grind them down. With every base captured, the Reapers deny the Turian fleet another place to repair or refuel. Everything seems to be classified. And with each planet that we read about, we sort of get a uh, bit of an insight into just to, to how thorough the Reapers are in their destruction of all these locations. They really are hell-bent on just eliminating all forms of life, aren't they? Liara and James? Weapon loadouts will be exactly the same and there's no squad points to put into the powers so it should just be a case of exiting stage left and exiting disc one.
<laughs> and we thought Earth had it bad. friend there. Holy hell. They're getting decimated. Strongest military in the galaxy and the Reapers are obliterating it. Was it like this on Earth? Yes. Shepard. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Commander, the LZ is getting swarmed. James, open that hatch. Clear the landing zone! Husks! Just put me down, I'll clear it on foot. Get in, get out. Let's move. Okay, let's get up here. Who's this? Soldier, which way to your commanding officer? Straight ahead and around the corner, past the first barricade. Straight ahead, around the corner, past the first barricade. No problem. This in the distance as well. Oh boy. Find the commanding officer. Oh, it's a scary sight, I tell you. Something. Sniper rifle. Any of you guys in charge? Okay, obviously not. From your lack of a response, I take that as a no. Ground report. Knowledge of the terrain is our only advantage here and that's not going to last forever if they keep throwing their forces at us. We'll hold this area as long as we can. I'm linking my transponder to the life signal monitoring systems of the unit suits. If it goes out, send another unit here ASAP. Tabestic, get your men up on that north barricade. Yes, sir. Sergeant Bardas, find a way to get that comm tower operational. Sir. General. Commander Shepard, heard you were coming, but I didn't believe it. General Corinthus. I've come to get Primarch Fedori. Primarch Fedorian is dead. His shuttle was shot down an hour ago as it tried to leave the moon. That's gonna complicate things. How bad is it, General? We just lost about 400 men in half an hour. Oh. 
We set up camps on this moon as an advanced position to flank the enemy. A sound strategy. Just... Irrelevant. Exactly. The sheer force of the Reapers seems to make them immune to that sort of tactic. The Primarch and his men found that out the hard way. I'm sorry. That's a big loss for everyone. Reaper bastards. So what happens now? The Turian hierarchy provides very clear lines of succession. Right. General Corinthus? With such heavy casualties, it's hard for me to be certain who the next Primarch is. Palavan Command will know. However, at the moment, contacting them is impossible. The comm tower is out. Husks are swarming that area. We can't get close enough to repair it. Well, I'm not leaving this moon until I know where the new Primarch is. I'll fix your tower. Thank you, Commander. I'll take care of things on this end. All right, let's go. Oh dear, Primarch Fedorian bit the dust, did he?